Hey, look at these. Now, tell me what they all have in common. That's right. They're all the fourth entry into each series. Not only that though, but they're also usually considered the worst of each series. Now, walk with me. You see these games? There's three, right? Well, what if I told you a fourth was coming and I'm not too sure how I feel about it just yet. Because I'd be lying if I said I was excited, but I'd also be lying if I said I wasn't. I'm kinda in this weird middle ground right now as I don't really know how to feel about it. Cause on the one hand, the next game could be a huge flop and then we just go back to BL2 or whatever other game we use to fill the void. But on the other hand, it could blow us away and become the new de facto game for many. The only question I seem to keep asking myself recently is, is Borderlands 4 even necessary? I ask myself this question so often because I really don't know if it is. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, I don't think Borderlands 4 will necessarily fail, but I also don't think that it will necessarily succeed like we hope it does. Here's why. I am a gameplay first and foremost type of person. And since the first Borderlands, every game has added something new like slag in Borderlands 2, butt slamming in the pre-sequel, Sliding and mantling in Borderlands 3, and finally, dual classing in Wonderlands. So, what could the next game add that would make the game feel fresh and not just a copy-paste of the last? Me personally, I don't know. Maybe add all of the previous systems into one game, as that would be very nice, but even then, there wouldn't be anything new added. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. And since we're on the topic of gameplay, let's talk balance. When Borderlands 3 first launched, things were highly unbalanced and that made the game super fun. But then Gearbox hit us with the nerf apocalypse, and everyone hated that. Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. As the DLC season went on, players started to notice that some of the best guns were gated behind a DLC paywall, and the base game guns never got adjusted to be on the level of DLC weapons, leading players to believe that Gearbox did this purposefully to siphon more money out of the existing players. Now, whether you believe that's true or not is up to you. All I'm trying to say is Borderlands 4 has to find a better way of adding DLC items and adjusting things instead of just nerfing weapons into the ground, then slowly buffing them back up over time. Next, I'd like to touch on the story. I know, I know, I've had so many videos on the story already, but trust me, this is important. With Borderlands 3, we saw a massive wave of backlash after the story failed to resonate with the community. Many people disliked the way certain characters were handled, and others disliked the fact that Borderlands 3 wasn't about the huge war that Nereid had warned us about. Now is not the time for bickery or touches. War is coming, and you will need all the vault hunters you can get. In my opinion though, the Borderlands story managed to move the action forward, so it was at least okay in my book. Now, the same cannot be said for new tales from the Borderlands. because the end of that game completely ruins any hope I had for the next game's story. As you progress through new tales, you learn about a crystal, then obtain said crystal. And you may be thinking, who cares? It's just a crystal, why does this matter? But this is not just any crystal. This crystal has the power to heal anyone and even revive previous characters that have died, essentially taking all the weight of a character's death and tossing it out the window. Now, some people think this could be a good thing as previous characters like Maya and Roland could return in Borderlands 4, which would be okay until you realize if they could come back then so could Handsome Jack, meaning Gearbox could bring back Handsome Jack a fourth time as we've had him in Borderlands 2, the pre-sequel, and to an extent Borderlands 3 with the Handsome Jackpot DLC. Now, I'm not saying this will 100% happen, nor do I think that this actually would happen, but I do worry about it, seeing as the crystal does exist. What we don't know yet is if New Tales from the Borderlands is canon in Borderlands 4 or not, which I hope to god that it isn't, because if it is, I do not see the story going well at all. Me personally though, I'd like to see the war that we should have gotten in Borderlands 3 as the story in Borderlands 4, but let's move on. Good optimization in any game is a must-have, so when Borderlands 3 released and had so many problems at launch, it wasn't unusual that the game tanked in players. What is unusual though, is that Borderlands 4 is rumored to be made on Unreal Engine 4, which we know Gearbox isn't the best at optimizing very quickly. What? So if any major problems arise in Borderlands 4, it'll probably be a while before we see them tackle it and get it resolved. But 
Just for fun, let's say Borderlands 4 was being made on Unreal Engine 5, the brand new engine that a lot of studios are using right now. Then, we would have a different problem. That problem being Gearbox would be creating Borderlands 4 on an engine they've never used, which in turn could just create more issues. And trust me, I want a good game as much as the next guy, but I feel that if Gearbox is making the fourth Borderlands game now, they should take as much time as possible to QA test everything that they can before launch, because we don't need another Borderlands 3 situation. Okay, we're getting a little more controversial with the next to, so bear with me. I believe with the countless years of experience and dev knowledge that Gearbox has, they should just leave Borderlands behind and create a brand new unique looter shooter experience, as I feel that they have outgrown the series and want to move on. This would also wipe away all the bad foundation and problems that Borderlands has and is known for, then give them something new and exciting to work on, because as we know, working on one thing for too long can and will chip away at the passion you once had for that thing. I personally believe that's why we got Borderlands 3 and Wonderlands in the state that they were in because the devs are just bored of the series and don't have the passion for it like they used to. I mean, just imagine what the devs and writers could do without the constraints of the Borderlands series on them. I feel as if Gearbox needs this because it could reignite the passion they once had for making games. And who knows, maybe they can make a better Borderlands after that passion came back. My next topic might be a bit more controversial than the last, but I want to talk about it anyways as it could make or break the next game succeeding, which is funny as it has nothing to do with the game and everything to do with the community. The Borderlands community as of late is not doing well partially due to the poor releases by Gearbox, but also the drama being pushed on the YouTube side of things. I personally am not exempt from this, as I've made two drama videos myself, with one being positive and one being negative. Now, I just want to outright state that I do not want drama in the community, as it splits the community into two different sides, making it almost impossible to reason with one side or the other. This in turn has led to toxic comment sections and hate being spread throughout the community, which I condemn wholeheartedly. I'd personally like nothing more than to have a healthy and thriving community that can reason and talk with one another instead of just blindly siding with one creator over the next. Now, you may be saying, well, you're a hypocrite. You made a video about Epic NG, and yes, I do have problems with Epic NG and did not want to clear anything up with him at the time that I released the video, but I've thought about it and if he would like to clear things up, he is more than welcome to message me on Twitter or anywhere else to talk, but that's not the main reason I brought this up. The main reason I brought this up is because I feel like the toxicity in the Borderlands community is being perpetuated by a select few creators. These creators are not only enabling this type of behavior, but in some cases are acting this way themselves. So, all I ask is please condemn this behavior, because we don't need it in the community as it will only hurt us in the long run. Thank you. Anyways, those are my reasons for asking the question, is Borderlands 4 even necessary? Now, I'd like to hear what you think in the comments down below. But anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video as always, and if you did, drop a like, it's much appreciated. And if you want to see more of my content, hit the sub button, it's free and only takes a second. But anyways, I love y'all, see y'all in the next one, have a good day, and goodbye.